Hi everyone, I'm Jackie. Welcome back to my kitchen out here in the woods north of Huntsville, Ontario. As promised, I'm bringing you another dessert recipe as part of the Real Women of Philadelphia cooking competition. And this recipe is particularly close to my heart because it features a double hit of chocolate. Today we are making white chocolate cheesecake souffles atop a dark chocolate sauce. Wow! I love making souffles for dessert. I think they are deceptive in their simplicity. To look at them, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot going on, but one bite and you're taken out of this world. Plus this recipe is made with ingredients that I typically have on hand in my pantry and fridge anyway, so they come together in a snap. There are a number of steps involved, but none of them are difficult and we'll walk right through them. And we will start off with a tip, my flavor tip for how we're going to heighten the contrast between the dark and white chocolate. So for the white chocolate, we're going to bring the vanilla flavors forward and we're going to do that by adding vanilla bean seeds. So I have here some vanilla beans. Oh, they smell so good. And I've cut open about an inch length and I've folded that open and I'm just going to use the tip of my paring knife to scrape the seeds out. Okay, so those are our vanilla bean seeds and they're kind of clumpy. If we were to add this to our white chocolate cheesecake batter like this, it wouldn't work very well, it wouldn't get dispersed. So what we do is just tip them into a little bit of sugar. I have a little bowl of white granulated sugar and I'm just using my fingers to rub the seeds into the sugar and that's going to break them up and disperse them. And with my empty vanilla bean pod, that's not going to waste, don't you worry. Whenever I have an empty vanilla bean pod, I just tuck it into my jar of sugar and it infuses the sugar with that amazing vanilla essence and then I use that sugar in so many of my baked goods. It's subtle, but the subtleties make the difference. Okay, so that's all mixed up. We'll set that aside. So that's how we are enhancing our white chocolate. For our dark chocolate, we're going the other way. We're going to add some coffee flavor to really bring forward the roasty bitter notes. And for coffee flavor, I've just taken a quarter teaspoon of instant coffee granules and dissolve them into a half teaspoon of hot water and that's it. And this is going straight into our chocolate sauce mixture. So I've got in a bowl here some chopped dark chocolate, an equal amount of Philadelphia cream cheese regular and the Philly is going to add some great body to this chocolate sauce. And I have it sitting over a pot of barely simmering water. The water isn't going all the way to the top and the bowl is not touching the water. This is called a bain-marie. And we just stir that until it's smooth. And that is our chocolate sauce. And that's going in the bottom of our ramekins. And we need to prepare those first. So ramekin about three and a half inches across, two inches high. I've buttered them and we also have to dust them with sugar, coat them with sugar. That's easy. Just put a bit of sugar inside roll it, tap it. Can you see this? So it's all over the sides and that's going to help the souffles rise, tap out the excess. Gives the souffle batter something to grab onto as it's rising. And all we do now is divide our chocolate mixture between the two ramekins and I'm going to mound it up into a bit of a hill. Kind of like a roughly shaped truck. I'm just going to pop these ramekins into the freezer so that can set up a bit while we make our white chocolate cheesecake batter. And I'm doing that by starting off with a white chocolate ganache, which is just melting white chocolate with a little bit of cream over our bain-marie. And I'm melting it slowly, the heat's very low, um, because white chocolate can burn quite easily. The number of people around my dining table can vary greatly. Some days I'm cooking for two, some days I'm cooking for a crowd. So I love a recipe that's scalable, and this souffle recipe is great for that. You can double it, triple it, even quadruple it, and still get delicious results. Let me check this. Oh, yep. Yeah. We'll set that aside to cool briefly. 
while we get our cream cheese ready. And for that, I have some Philadelphia cream cheese regular at room temperature and an egg yolk. And I'm going to just whisk these together. All right, our cream cheese and egg yolk is nice and smooth. And I'm going to slowly whisk in our slightly cooled ganache. Next, we whip our egg whites. I have two egg whites here at room temperature, and that's important because cold egg whites don't whip very well. And we're going to whip them on medium until foamy, and then I'm slowly going to add that vanilla bean sugar that we mixed together earlier. Okay, I've whipped our egg whites. They look so pretty. They're glossy, and when I lift the beater, the tips of our peaks flop over. We don't want this over mixed. I'm adding about a third of our egg whites into our white chocolate cream cheese mixture and I'm stirring as gently as I can with our whisk just to lighten this mixture up a bit. And now I'm adding the rest of the egg whites and just going to fold them in. The egg whites, the whipped whites, are what give us the loft, the volume to our souffles. So we want to keep as much of that volume as possible when we're stirring this in. This dessert is another one that's great for entertaining because we can bake this right away like we're going to today or we could put it in the fridge for up to a day and bake it straight from the fridge or we could even put them into the freezer and hold them for oh, a month or so and then bake them practically straight from the freezer. You just leave them on the counter while the oven's preheating. All that's left to do now is fill our ramekins and pop them in the oven. They only take a short time to bake, anywhere from say 15, 14 to 18 minutes. And if you don't get the timing bang on your first time making these, don't worry about it because if you take them out a little early, the texture will be more creamy custardy on the inside. If you take them out a little towards the late end, they'll have firmed up a little more towards a, a, a cakey kind of consistency. And no matter when you take them out, no matter what the consistency, they will taste fantastic. And you can fill these up right to the top. Alright, so I'm putting these on a cookie sheet, makes it easier for taking in and out. I've lined the cookie sheet with parchment paper in case we have any bubbling over. It'll make for easy cleanup and in these go. So I've set my timer for 14 minutes and I'll check my souffles then. They're done when they've puffed up. They're starting to set but they're still a little bit jiggly. While they're baking, this is a great time to clear the dinner dishes off the table, maybe put on some coffee and get everybody ready because souffles wait for no one. When they are ready, it's time to eat. They'll start to deflate almost immediately. Okay, here they come. Ooh. I'm going to dust those powdered sugar a sprig of mint and that is it then they are they're going straight to the table if they make it that far beautiful hit of color wow so that is our white chocolate cheesecake souffle atop a dark chocolate sauce Didn't I tell you a souffle waits for no one? I'm diving in right now. Oh. It's smooth, it's creamy, it's custardy, and it has that dark chocolate sauce at the bottom. Wow. Mm. Oh my goodness. I hope you've enjoyed our recipe today and I look forward to seeing you again for another Philadelphia dessert. Bye for now.